Hey guys, welcome to 1998 and what it was like to upgrade your graphics card from an NVIDIA River 128 to a TNT. For me, a huge part of why I do these projects is working with parts that back in the day were simply too expensive or poor value, but I would spend hours reading articles on Tom's Hardware and Anatec, obsessing over benchmark graphs and how much faster the latest and greatest processors and video cards were compared to what I was using at home. Technology moved extremely fast and upgrading your PC was a very regular thing. The PC we're using today is based around a slot 1 motherboard from AOPEN with the extremely popular Intel 440BX chipset. The processor is the Intel Pentium 2 running at 450MHz. This is the fastest version of the Pentium 2 and became available in August of 1999. We are starting off with the NVIDIA River 128. This card launched towards the end of 1997 and then we will upgrade to the River TNT that launched in the middle of 1998 to see what sort of improvement you could have gotten if money wasn't an issue. But we will also look into any processor bottlenecks by switching out the processor to a 1 GHz Pentium 3. Are these graphics cards being held back by the Pentium 2 450 and if so, just by how much? We will also look a bit closer at two games and how they scale with resolutions from 320x240 all the way up to 1024x768 and because the River TNT can render in 32-bit colors, how much performance does this cost compared to gaming with 16-bit colors? And we have some direct VGA captures of both cards so we can take a look if there are any differences. Let's take a look at the two graphics cards we are using today. We have the Elsa Victory Eraser LT8 SD with the River 128 ZX chip and 8 MB of video memory. I chose this model because the regular 4 MB model doesn't work at the 1024x768 resolution. The second card is from Diamond. It is the Viper V550 with the River TNT chip and has 16 MB of video memory. The first benchmark is Final Reality. Benchmarking the River 128 is difficult as there is no way to disable VSync in the drivers. It relies on the application to do that. This is rarely mentioned in historic reviews, often giving competing cards like the 3DFX Voodoo an edge in some benchmarks. But Final Reality and 3 d Mark 99 Max disable VSync so they are great tools to compare older cards with. This benchmark runs at 640x480 and on the Pentium 2 450 we are seeing little difference between the two cards. The blue bar is the River 128 and the orange bar represents the River TNT. The River TNT is a little bit faster but the difference is small. Let's add the results with the faster Pentium 3 running at 1 GHz. The performance for both cards goes up nicely. We are seeing roughly a doubling in performance thanks to the faster processor. Between the River 128 TNT the differences are still small and both cards still being held back by the processor. Let's move on to 3D Mark 99 Max. This benchmark is much more demanding. It runs at 800 by 600 and we can now see a huge difference between the two cards. In the race benchmark the TNT does 38 FPS compared to 17.1 of the River 128 and in the first person benchmark the difference is even greater with the TNT rendering 40 frames per second compared to only 6.1 of the River 128. Upgrading the processor from the Pentium 2 450 to a Pentium 3 1 GHz and both cards pick up speed with the River TNT showing a much larger performance gain. But it is clear that both cards are benefiting from the extra CPU power and couldn't show their true potential with what was available in 1998. Now let's take a closer look at two games and see what's going on at different resolutions. Here we have Incoming, a very popular game that has built-in benchmarking capabilities. Let's start with the blue line which are the benchmark results on the Pentium 2 450. Remember that the River 128 has fixed VSync in this benchmark, so that's why we're getting the same score at 640x480 and 800x600. What we can see here is that the faster Pentium 3 1 GHz processor only makes a difference at the 640x480 resolution. Let's add the results for the River TNT. The grey line is on the Pentium 2 450, the yellow line with the Pentium 3 1 GHz. Firstly, we can clearly see just how much faster the TNT is. 
at 1024 by 768, the TNT is almost four times as fast. So that is an incredible improvement and a good example of the sort of performance leaps you would see back in 1998. We can also see that the processor makes little difference, even at the fairly low 640x480 resolution. It's only at 320x240 that the TNT is being bottlenecked by the Pentium 2 450. On to the next game, GL Quake, which uses the OpenGL API, similar to incoming at 640x480 and higher we are bottlenecked by the River 128. It is only at 320x240 that the faster processor makes a difference. Also looking at the numbers, the River 128 does a good job at delivering playable frames at 640x480 and 800x600. So what does GL Quake look like on the TNT? Once again, the processor makes no difference at 640x480 and higher. So even the TNT is bottlenecking the Pentium 2 450 in this game. It's only at 320x240 that we can see the processor making a difference. The TNT is quite a bit faster, a little bit more than double the speed of the River 128 and giving you those silky smooth 60 FPS at 640x480 and also 800x600. And the final slides we're looking at is performance at 32-bit colors. Nvidia made a big deal out of pointing out that the Voodoo cards couldn't render in 32 bits, with 3FX countering that the performance drop at 32 bit wasn't worth it for gaming. So here we can see the TNT performance in incoming across the resolutions when comparing 16 and 32 bit colors. The orange line are the results at 32 bit colors and the blue line at 16 bit colors. Most interesting, however, is the gray line. This shows in percentage how much performance we are left with compared to 16-bit. So we can see that as the resolution increases, the 32-bit performance goes lower and lower. At 1024 by 768, we're giving up 37% performance when using 32-bit colors. In GL Quake, the performance drop is much less. At 1024 by 768, we are only losing 20% when using 32-bit colors we can still see that the performance drop increases with higher resolutions. And finally, let's talk about the image quality. In Tomb Raider, we can see one issue that plagues the River 128 in many games, and that is you can often see white seams between polygons. The overall image of the River 128 is a bit rougher with more noise and more visible dithering. In incoming, this is clearly visible, and we can also see the logo at the top and the text on the bottom left look nicer on the TNT. So what key points can we take away from all these results? Well, firstly, it is really fascinating to see just how much faster the TNT is compared to the River 128. In GL Quake, we're getting more than double the performance, but incoming is even more impressive with four times the performance at 1024 by 768. But do note that the River 128 has V-Sync fixed in this game. I do believe that in GL Quake, V-Sync is actually disabled on the River 128, so the doubling in performance is likely the more reliable result. We also saw that our Pentium 2 450 is all that you need to fully saturate both graphics cards. You don't even need to run high resolutions. 640x480 is all it takes to make the graphics card the main bottleneck. We can also see that the River 128 is more of a 30 FPS graphics card, whereas the TNT will do 60 FPS in many games, in older games even at higher resolutions. We saw that enabling 32-bit colors causes a noticeable performance drop, but does depend on the game and the resolution. At 640x480, you can enable 32-bit colors without much of a loss in performance and more than 60 FPS in incoming, for example. The overall image of the River 128 is a bit rougher with more noise and more visible dithering. In incoming this is clearly visible and we can also see the logo at the top and the text on the bottom left look nicer on the TNT. So there you have it. This gives us a good idea of what it would have felt like for someone in 1998 with plenty of disposable cash to buy the latest and greatest computer parts. More than double the performance is just not something we see these days. On the flip side, this also means that today we don't have to upgrade nearly as often as we did back in the day. So I hope you found this video interesting and I'm eager to hear from you in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and click on that notification bell. Give it a thumbs up or thumbs down and share it with your friends. Thank you for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.